Today we're coming to you from Forest Hill Park in Kansas City, Missouri. Many notable people are buried here, including fashion designer Kay Spade. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. I dropped my lovely Katie off at the airport here. We were originally, <laughs> uh, we originally were going to drive home together and everything, but then with my car dying and me having to go back to Joplin, we just figured she should fly out of here. And right after I leave here, we're going to go to Joplin, deal with the car. I couldn't, uh, she could have probably waited and everything, but I'm flying somewhere else. I got an invite to go somewhere else that you guys will love in the future. All right, it's taken some looking, but I finally found the grave of Catherine Brosnahan. Um, we know her by a different name. You want to uh, come out and find this circle right here. And then look for the headstone that says Benedict. This is the grave of Kate Spade. But you notice that she is not buried with the last name Spade. Here you can see family members. So what happened to Kate Spade? Kate was born here in Kansas City and raised here. She was the fifth of six children and she would say when she was a kid that she just loved to watch her mom dress up. She just couldn't wait until the day that she would get to do that and look pretty and do all that as well. And when she would grow up, she said she always loved to go out shopping for clothes that she thought looked great and that when she would bring them home, her siblings would say that they thought she was crazy. She would buy things that she said reminded her of Audrey Hepburn. And she eventually ended up uh, leaving Kansas City when she decided to go to college and went to college out in Arizona and went for journalism, but ended up meeting her longtime boyfriend, life partner, who had become her husband, Andy Spade. And Andy Spade is actually the brother of David Spade, the comedian. But Andy and Kate met and he was studying advertising and they started dating. And when they graduated, he started an advertising company and she went to New York and went to live with a friend of hers in, their, in her friend's apartment and got a temp job working at Mademoiselle Magazine and she said she just ended up getting hired on, never left, and stayed there for years, and eventually worked her way up to being the chief fashion editor. But she said when she would do photo shoots for the magazine, there were always things that she would think of that she would like to include, but she could never find them. So she just started one day sketching out ideas for handbags, and then started kind of cutting out the the templates for them and taking them to uh, the garment district and having them made. And eventually her and Andy um, decided to try and go into business together. They weren't married yet, but Andy was really good at marketing and advertising. And she was really good at coming up with the ideas and the designs. And she just always put everything from herself into the design so they decided to call it Kate Spade like I said even though they weren't married they used her first name and Andy's last name and it became a partnership and her I believe it was her college roommate Elise also came and started helping with the with the business and before they knew it they you know she was a new name in the fashion world she had these really colorful designs and the fashion world just seemed to really like what she was doing. And so she was pretty successful. She was able to get her handbags initially into like Barney's and Macy's and some of the bigger stores and had really good write-ups in the fashion magazines. 
But um, she just never, she never thought that she was ever really truly accepted. She never felt that the fashion world treated her well or um, gave her the respect that she always had hoped. She would even be like the fashion designer of the year and then she would go to um, fashion week and then be sat in really poor places and she wasn't someone who was seeking fame anyway so she wasn't the kind of person that ran up to cameras or was looking to give an interview was looking for that kind of attention and from what I've read in the fashion world that's that's kind of like something you have to do you have to be a self promoter you have to be very um, outgoing in that world and so she just never really seemed to feel at home in it but she did have an extremely successful company Andy had come up with the idea when they started making the handbags to put her name on the label on the outside of the bag which normally was not done and uh, he thought you know it would be it would stand out it would be free advertising and it would be something that would be kind of like a hallmark for that bag. It would be recognizable everywhere, and it certainly was. So they ended up building this into a huge, huge company. She was, she went from just doing handbags to doing shoes and doing different clothing and uh, stationery, all kinds of stuff, and then got a really lucrative offer, almost a hundred million dollars for her business from Neiman Marcus. And the uh, the partners, Andy, Kate, I believe at least was also a partner, her, her uh, roommate that helped get it started. And they ended up selling the business in 2006. Part of it was because, I mean, it was a really lucrative offer, but Kate and Andy had had a baby and Kate was looking forward to being a stay-at-home mom. and. So that's what they ended up doing. She ended up basically retiring and uh, for 10 years wasn't really in the fashion world. She raised their daughter and um, it was said from her her close friends and people that worked for her who were kind of one and the same. They said that, um, you know, her life was the business. And so when she sold Kate Spade, she went from having, you know, an office where she went every day and had people to talk to, people that were so close to her even though they were employees that she considered them her closest friends. Um, she didn't have that anymore. And so some of the people around her felt like she lost herself a little bit. She, uh, during this time, was really suffering, or started at least showing signs of suffering from um, heavy anxiety and depression and was seeking treatment for that. And then after 10 years, she decided to try and get back into the business. She, um, she decided to come up with a new handbag company and named it after her family names. Um, I don't see any of those names out here as I look around, but it was uh, Frances Valentine. Frances was um, on her mother's side name and Valentine was her, I believe her mother's father's name, her grandfather. And so since she always made everything personal, uh, it was said that when she would release designs under Kate Spade, if they didn't do well, she took it personal. She took it as though people didn't like her if they didn't like the design. So when she came up with this name, she, you know, she couldn't go by Kate Spade anymore. She had sold the company along with her name to the company. So she ended up adding Frances Valentine to her legal name. It became Catherine Noel Frances Valentine Brosnahan Spade and she ended up making that her primary focus it wasn't a hobby it was something that she was going to throw everything in and she even like I said she would make all the people that worked for her were kind of her closest friends they eventually became that so she would name her handbag she would name her shoes and things like that after people that worked for her that were friends of hers and when she released this it just kind of seemed confusing to the fashion world. People didn't know Frances Valentine was Kate Spade. They, um, she tried to basically run the, the business the way it had been run 10 years before and the business had changed. There was a lot more competition and getting a write-up in a magazine wasn't quite as big for your business as it used to be. And so it just wasn't getting the attention really that she was used to. So some people thought that that kind of 
helped add to her stress and her just the disappointment of it not being accepted so well or accepted the way that she would have thought. So that was in 2016 and she had been working on that up until her passing. Um, now that's sad because nobody seems to have seen it coming. She was, um, she was widely known in her circle of friends as being like a happy person, kind of a um, cheeky, great sense of humor, fun to be around, not gloomy or anything like that. Um, since she was, you know, she was being fun to be around. And um, at the, the last year, apparently her and Andy started having problems. He would end up releasing a statement after her passing saying that for the last 10 months they hadn't lived together and that they had separated, but that it wasn't leading to divorce and that they were still having frequent meals as a family with their daughter. Their daughter was still living in both places. He even said that he spoke to her the night before her passing and she sounded happy. She was looking up different colleges for their daughter who was 13. But um, sadly it was the next day one of her employees who was her housekeeper that she was good friends with Bella. He, she actually named a shoe after Bella. Bella came to work and couldn't get one of the doors open and went and got a manager or got like a janitor or someone in the building to come help push the door open and when they pushed it open they they saw that Kate was was there and there was a note and she was she had perished um it was sad that uh you know like I said nobody saw it coming and uh when uh just the whole world was shocked but her sister came out the next day and said that um she knew that that Kate had battled she had battled being bipolar and so um there was, you know, some speculation because of her age being 55 that she was, you know, ha battling the anxiety and the depression and at this time also very well could have been going through menopause which would have had an effect but also there was also a report that a day or two or a couple of days before she had talked to someone very close to her on the phone and um, they had told her that they didn't think that she should take the medication that she was taking. And so if she would have gone off of that, that could have also kind of led to her depression, which is unfortunate. Um, you know, she, she, um, she seemed like from everything that I've read, like she was just a really heavily driven perfectionist person who, you know, just took they said she would take, if um, someone said something that could be taken personal, she would take it personal. Not that she'd get angry, she would get upset. Like she, she would hold it in and be um, depressed and sad about it. And so unfortunately it was, um, we lost a very interesting woman and a pioneer in the designing world. It's unfortunate. There's still Kate Spade bags out there everywhere. She should definitely be remembered for all of her colorful bags everywhere you go. Kate Spade, New York, even though you know she hadn't made them or designed them since 2006, it's really amazing what someone who just went in for a temp job was able to do with her life. So rest in peace, Kate Brosnahan. Thank you for all your contributions to fashion and pop culture and uh, rest in peace. I want to thank Jason Thomas for becoming a Patreon, helping to support my channel, helping to support um, travels and coming out to places like this. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time from Kansas City. Goodbye.